there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna look at some really frugal watercolor paints. Uh, a couple, well, about a week and a half ago, I did this painting here, and I used a set of watercolors that came in my Smart Art Box, which is a subscription box, and I asked you guys if anyone was interested in a review, I would do a review of these watercolors, because I'd never heard of them or used them before, so I was kind of curious about what they cost and what their deal was, uh, because these are made by the Talons Company that also makes Van Gogh and Rembrandt watercolors. Van Gogh being the student line, and I thought, you know, Van Gogh student watercolors are so good, why would they have another line? Why would they have another line? So I, uh, I checked it out, I talked to some of my um, friends from overseas, and they told me the art creation line is more for like schools and more of a budget line of paints. I looked it up online, and Blick has a set of 12 of the art creation watercolors, the same size tubes here, which is 12 milliliter for uh, $7.96, so about, a, yeah, less than a dollar a tube, and then they have the set of 24 for $15.16, so um, very, very affordable, about 60 cents a tube, doing math in my head so it's not accurate, but around that, um, for 12 milliliters of paint. I think that's a, that's a really great value. So I was wondering how they would compare to the Van Gogh watercolors and the Rembrandt watercolors, since I have some of those colors in my stash already, and I am a big fan of of the Van Gogh and Rembrandt watercolors. So uh, first of all, the paints, th I did this painting without knowing anything about the watercolors. I thought they mixed really well, they worked well wet into wet. I just squirted a little bit of color onto my palette here because um, I'm trying not to fill like palettes, permanent palettes with paint. I'm just putting out a small amount when it's a new brand that I haven't tried before because I get a little overwhelmed with the amount of palettes that I have with paint in them. I squeeze out half pans and then it's like, oh, where am I going to store these? And it just becomes, it just becomes insane. If you've seen my palette tour, you know that I have a problem with palettes. So I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm just going to try out a little bit of a thing. I'm going to put my the tubes away unless I really think I need to add it to my stash in a half pan because... Um, because um, it's a really unique color, color. Otherwise, if it's good quality, it can just go in my stash and I can refill a palette when it, uh, yeah, a palette or a pan when it runs out. So what I did was I did have some paint left over from those paintings, so I let it dry in my palette for, um, that was probably about a week and a half ago, and nothing cracked. I was really pleased with that, and since some viewers asked if I would do a review on this, I figured I'd let it dry out, I'd see if it cracked, and I'd see how easily they rewet. And um, they rewet really well. I was really impressed. I just did um, uh, swatches here from the dried out, dried down paint. They rewet really well. I did a little glaze test there just a few minutes ago. They didn't lift up what was underneath, which I thought was really good. I'll just like get a little blue here and. You can see that rewets really well. Glaze is over. Um, I can do a quick little lift test because I think we could lift pretty well. I'll just use the same Taclon brush because it's. Um, I figured you know a beginner would probably be using a Taclon brush because they're pretty um, durable and um, easy to get, not very expensive. So I wanted to use what like a beginner would typically use, but yeah, and you can lift it up. You can lift up really well. Reds, especially cool reds, tend to be a little bit more difficult. No problem lifting, but also no problem glazing if you are careful. So definitely, definitely suitable for beginner work because when you're a beginner, sometimes you make some mistakes. You need to lift out the paint. You go outside of the lines. You want to push it back. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely good there. So that's the issue. One of the issues with budget grade paints, a lot of times they lift. If you try to layer, your bottom layers just keep lifting up and it's very frustrating because you can't build that luminosity that you want or that complexity that you want. And it seems like this is going to, um, this is going to handle a couple layers. I don't know if it will go much beyond that. There wasn't a lot of cloudiness as I painted over the black stripe here. What I did is just drew a couple quick, um, ink, alcohol ink lines and let it dry and then I swatched the colors over it. I can see some uh, sediment, some chalkiness with the yellow, not a lot. I can see the pigment on the yellow ochre but that's typical with, I mean I even see it in the Van Gogh line. Um, There's a little bit in the green but uh, but really they weren't bad. There wasn't a lot of chalkiness, definitely less chalkiness than I typically see in a budget 
paint. And by budget paint, what I'm talking about is um, a paint that's sold like in a set, doesn't have pigment information, it's generally um, less than a dollar a tube, and um, you can't buy them open stock, meaning you can't buy like a tube of lemon yellow if it runs out, or a tube of yellow ochre. So for a budget range paint, it performed really well. Now I couldn't understand why uh, Talons would come out with a budget line paint when it has a beautiful student line paint called Van Gogh, and it's also got its professional line, which is uh, Rembrandt. And so I went through my paint stash and I pulled out the colors I had of Van Gogh. I don't have a lot because I typically don't buy um, student grade paint these days, but uh, some viewers had asked for a review of it, so I ordered some because I didn't have any, and I was really impressed. And, and even with the Van Gogh, I do see a little bit of a chalkiness on the lemon yellow and on the magenta, and even a little bit on this vermilion. I didn't have the exact same colors that was in the art creation set that I got in my Smart Art box, but I just kind of went as close as I could just to have something to compare, like with vibrancy and whatnot, like the ultramarine blue. You can see a big difference in the ultramarine blue in the art create in the uh, Van Gogh versus the art creations. But, I mean, that vibrancy, that's not bad. I mean, these are definitely better, but that's not too bad. And then in the Rembrandt, you really see the difference in the ultramarine blue, but um, it's kind of hard to tell because the pigments would be are completely different between the lines. I just wanted to get kind of a visual comparison like that. That paint's gray actually is pretty, uh, is pretty nice. <laughs> I don't use paint's gray very much. That was in the uh, Art Creations line. But I just wanted to get a little bit of comparison of, of the three different lines of paint from this manufacturer in case you were curious. Maybe you went to a store and you saw the Talons logo and you were wondering if maybe you should buy that instead of the Van Gogh. So who would I recommend this for? I would recommend these paints to beginners to watercolor, like maybe you've had some Prang or Crayola watercolor cakes and you want to try two watercolors for the first time, or maybe you're teaching your kids how to paint, or you're a teacher and you're teaching a classroom and you're looking for an affordable option. With a tube like this, you could squirt out little dollops like in ice cube trays for your students or on a, on a uh, glass plate or something like that, and then they could learn mixing and they could paint, and you're not out a ton of money uh, while they're learning. For a beginner, you can definitely mix colors with this. I uh, used the eight color set here for this. I'm not even sure if I used all eight colors. Mix, mixed beautifully, worked great wet and to wet. I didn't get mud. Um, I thought it was, it was really nice to work with. Uh, as far as the budget paints go, I would say absolutely go for it. I would put them on par. I would put them um, like on par with like Royal Nine Nickel or Arteza, I would put them ahead of Reeves. And the one thing I noticed about these versus other budget paints that I've used is they don't crack in their in their palettes. You can squirt it out, let it dry, uh, so you don't have to worry about wasting. And it's not going to fall out and give you that awful paint confetti that happens when you put student paint in a palette without glycerin and then it all just kind of like cracks and jumbles together and then you've wasted it all. So you don't have to worry about that with these, which is nice. Um, my recommendation for these would be a beginner painter. I would recommend, since they're so inexpensive, going with a set of 24 for 15 bucks. And then as you use a tube up, because everybody has their own preferences, like I, I do believe you should have a split primary color uh, palette, meaning you take your primary colors, but you have a warm and a cold version of each. And um, and then you can mix pretty much everything from that. But you may prefer Prussian blue to Thalo blue, or you might prefer cobalt blue to ultramarine blue, or you might prefer Hansa yellow to lemon yellow. I don't know what's in that set of, um, of 24, but there'll be a variety of different colors. And you might like a Thalo green, green versus a sap green. You just will have different preferences as you go along. So as you use up a color, like say, okay, I've used up yellow ochre. Um, you know, you don't want to rebuy that set and get all the extra paint you don't need. Take that tube and say, okay, yellow ochre, go to the paint store. You can buy a tube of the Van Gogh yellow ochre because you will notice that jump in quality after you've got a few paintings under your belt. And then you can spend, you know, three or $4 on a tube of Van Gogh. And then when you run out of say, permanent rose, you go buy a tube of permanent rose. You run out of sap green, you know, buying, Better paints a tube at a time doesn't hurt your pocketbook that much, and you already know what you're going to use, so you're not spending a lot of money on paint that you might not even like. So that would be my recommendations with these paints. I think for a budget brand, they're they're wonderful. Um, definitely give them a try if you're looking for some inexpensive paints and you're a beginner. If you are experienced, you're probably going to be a little disappointed with these because they're a budget paint. They're less than a dollar a tube. Um, you know, you have to be realistic when you're looking at your paints, but. 
I definitely would say go for it if you're just looking to get started. I hope you found this helpful. If you got that Smart Art box, what do you think of these paints? Or if you've tried them before, let me know. I hear that they're very uh, popular with uh, school children in, um, in Europe, and uh, this is the first time I've ever heard of them when they came in that box, and I thought it was kind of fun to try something new. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy reviews, because I like making them for you. And until next time, happy crafting!